you and I would join Jesus in destroying the false kingdoms of this age, that, that we would join him. And some of the ways we talked about that we have the ability to join him in destroying the works of darkness on the earth right now is number one. We talked about it through, through using the rhema word of God, Ephesians 6. We talked about that earlier, the sword of the spirit. By slashing the lies, demolishing the lies of the enemy by the words that we release. Right? Are you with me? And by the words that we release, rhema words of God, fresh words, powerful words of God, creating an environment where people have the ability to believe and creating an environment where people are upgraded in their ability to believe all that the Father desires them to believe and have. Are you with me? We can create environments with our, with our mouth. We can create environments with our mouth where we can create a place where our grandkids, our kids and our grandkids can grow up and believe for the truth of God's word in their own reality. We can, we can create that. Because, because I, I know that's true because I also have lived the other side where I know that our parents can create an environment or we as parents can create an environment where our kids, are, are, they cower down. Are you with me? Where they don't feel like they have any hope, where they feel like they'll never amount to anything. So I think Dan said it last night. I talked about it last night as well. The power of life and death is in our tongue. This, this puppy, is, is, it's important and powerful. Right? Are you with me? I mean, we can release destiny over people li- people's lives by what we say. Good or bad, life or death, I want life. Yeah. I've experienced death, I want life. Are you with me on this? And so I'm, I'm the, the, another way that we talked about the reality of us being able to join Jesus was Romans 16, 20, this reality of, uh, and the God of peace, who is, who is Jesus' peace, will quick, quickly crush the enemy under our feet. I love joining him in this process. We're here. I talked about that this afternoon. We're here crushing the works of the enemy. Wherever we put our feet, we recognize that the establishment of the kingdom of God is at hand, right? Come on. Anybody that comes in contact with any one of us who are spirit-filled, surrendered, baptized believers in Jesus Christ, they have an opportunity. If we'll join Jesus, they have an opportunity to be encountered by the living God, the kingdom of God. And we talked about this earlier. In and within the kingdom of God is everything that you and I need. Everything that we need is in the kingdom, right? You agree with that? Everything. There's nothing outside. Everything that we need is in the kingdom. And when you and I find that, come on. It's like, it's, like a, it's like someone who goes out and finds a treasure, right? They, they, they sell everything to, to buy that. I mean, when you and I really come into a relationship with Jesus where he is our all in all, he satisfies everything, every, even the deepest longings in our life. Come on, you know it. You're, you'll just give everything away to have him, right? There are many people around us that are searching for that happiness. We know that. And you and I have incredible opportunities because we carry that kingdom, and when we come in contact with these people, if, if we'll join Jesus, we have the opportunity to crush the works of darkness and release life into those people's lives. That's, that's one of the incredible roles that we get to play in the kingdom of God. I just praise God for that. It's exciting. Think about that for a minute. Think how many people you come in contact with every single day as you do your life. Why not them? Come on. Let's do it. Let's just join Jesus in destroying the false kingdoms of this of this of this age right wow so my whole life now because i've been set free because i was i was you know i i i told you about my testimony but now that i've been set free my desire is to join jesus in this ministry of destroying the works of darkness and i and i i delight in that now i don't say that in a puffy way or a proud way i delight in knowing that god is punishing hell through me through, through my surrendered vessel right for everything that he's done for me and what he's done over through my family. And so I'm, I'm thankful that God allows us to join him on this journey of destroying the works of darkness. And I want to talk tonight about one, one of the ways that I believe you and I have the ability to join the Holy Spirit to release love into the atmosphere that, that not only dismantles the works and the schemes of the enemy, but actually has the ability to captivate the hearts and minds of those that Jesus wants to redeem and save and heal and deliver. That's what we want, right? We want to carry that with us. And so go with me, if you would, uh, to Galatians chapter 5. I want you to go there. I want to talk about what I think is our greatest weapon besides, now besides what I've already talked about, besides the sword of the Spirit, the rhema word of God, because the, the rhema word of God slashes and destroys the lies of the devil. Whenever you have the enemy coming against you, and you need to understand tonight, if you're going for some sort of Christian experience where you don't experience temptation from the enemy or the devil's not lying, that's not a possibility. I talked about that this afternoon. Jesus himself, who never sinned, 
was he was attempted in every way that we were and so that's part of our reality the reality though that we get to live in is the same as Jesus in this regard that every time we're tempted he promised he would make a way of escape and if we're living in this relationship, the intimacy with Jesus will recognize that way of escape. Now, when we start talking about, when I start talking about temptation, most of us think about the big temptations. Come on, sexual immorality and drugs and alcohol and, and all these different things. But come on, he, that's not where the enemy gets us. Come on, the enemy gets us on these little agreements that all of a sudden somehow I'm unworthy or somehow I'm not doing enough to receive or earn the righteousness that, that God gives us. Those are the little lies that we swallow right that lead us from a righteousness that is free as a gift of God to a righteousness that is based on performance and I can tell you right now scripturally there's no way I said it this afternoon there's no way that you and I can earn the righteousness that God has for us it's simply a gift what, and I, I practice this guys whenever I find the enemy lying to me in regards to righteousness on you're not reading the Bible enough you're not praying enough you're not witnessing enough when I start hearing lies like this I practice this I will either lay myself on the bed or I'll lay myself on the floor and I will submit to God and say God I could I can't do anything more than this to receive the righteousness the gift that you give us except simply surrender and believe are you with me Anytime the enemy tries to take you outside of that simple surrender and believing upon what Jesus Christ has done, that you've already agreed with a lie that's taking you down a dead end road. I'm just telling you. So, I, so Galatians 5, I want you to see this. Let's, let's start in verse uh, 16. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the spirit against the flesh for these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law verse 19 now the deeds of the flesh are evident which are immorality impurity sensuality idolatry sorcery enmities strife jealousy outbursts of anger disputes dissensions factions envying drunkenness carousing and the things like these of which I forewarn you just as I have forewarned you that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God you get that will not inherit the kingdom of God here's what I recognize I'm 48 years of age and for 42 years I was trained to live by the flesh 42 years I was trained to live by the flesh and what I mean by that I would I lived by my senses I lived by the way I felt I allowed my emotions to guide and lead me I allowed what I desired to guide and lead me are you with me my my my, my physical appetites they led me they guided me and and he says right here in his word Paul tells us right here people that live this way will not inherit the kingdom of God and I submit to you that all of us have been raised this way all this is this is how we grow up we all start out lost are you with me we all start out with this nature that's that 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 only wants its own way and it's all about selfishness come on look at I don't know if Dan said it last night but that's why we have uh, you know fast food that's why we have all, all these things that we can have so quickly right because it's all about me myself and I and when we live like that the reality is we will not be able to inherit the kingdom of God so I want you to get this the subtle way that the enemy works regarding living uh, by our senses uh, the first thing that the devil tries to do and I talk to people all the time I get to meet with people either in deliverance sessions or on the phone and and one of the things that, that I hear all the time from people is this reality they live in this false reality of sensuality that that says to me Jay I just I don't feel like reading my Bible but what about and I say you got to read the word you need to renew your mind and I give people steps and processes that are very simple um, such as uh, when you're dealing with this process of renewing your mind one very easy thing to do is to recognize the lie that is floating around inside your head right recognize what that lie is and then write that lie down on a piece of paper why is that so important here's the reality when you when you actually look at the lie of the devil that's being spoken into your mind you actually look at it on paper you're gonna realize how crazy that lie is how 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 non like the truth that lie really is and when you have it written down then you can take the time to go to the word and find out whether or not what is being spoken into yourself in your mind is actually of God or of the devil that gives you the ability to make a correct 
decision based upon truth. Jesus said that truth sets us free, right? Truth's the only thing that sets us free. And so when we recognize that we have lies at work in, in, our, in our mind, the only way we're going to get those lies out of there is to denounce the lie by putting in truth. That's called renewing the mind, right? You with me in that? You guys are, you guys are awesome. I appreciate you listening. And so the, one, of the, one of the main things that, that the devil uses as a scheme, not this is real practical tonight, but one of the main things that I see the devil uses against people when they're in this process of renewing their mind is to try to get them to simply live by their senses and never to break out of that reality and to begin living by the Spirit. Are you with me? It doesn't matter what your senses say. It doesn't matter what your emotions say. The truth is the only thing that sets us free. Come on. I remember when I was set free from the demonic oppression that was in my life. And I, I didn't feel, my emotions didn't feel like spending time with Jesus alone. My emotions felt like weeping and crying because I, I had anxiety that was out, you know, out of the, it was crazy. Um, I, I thought I was going to die. It was that kind of anxiety. Constant panic attacks, not being able to breathe, thought I was having a heart attack. It was hell on earth. I never experienced anything like it in my life. And so I didn't have, my emotions had no no desire to get along with Jesus and hang out with him and allow him to transform me, but I knew that the word said that truth would set me free and truth is Jesus, right? And so I had to force myself to deny my senses and to follow after truth. And the more that I grabbed a hold and latched onto the word of God and believed it for my own reality, the more that the lies that were in my head began to be removed and dislodged. Are you, are you with me? And the more I realized that I would actually establish strongholds of truth, the next time the liar began to speak into my head, it wasn't as much of an issue because I already understood what it looked like. It had already been exposed by the truth of God's word, right? I said this verse this afternoon, 1 John 1, 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, right? Who's he? Jesus. What, we have fellowship one with another. That fe Listen, guys, that fellowship is, it's tight, it's intimate. It's real. He's here with us. He promised he'd never leave nor forsake. If we walk in that kind of a relationship, when I, when I think about walking in the light, what I think about is, is what that means to me. It's, it's, it's a, for me, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a fulfillment or a completion of what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, when Paul said that we don't, you know, he, he says we, our weapons are not, are not carnal, but our weapons are mighty for pulling down strongholds. We, we go after everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What is something that would exalt itself against, against the knowledge of God? You know, if the devil tells you that you're unworthy to receive what God has for you, come on, if the devil tells you you're not doing enough, to be a believer. The devil tells you you're not praying enough. All these things would be lies, right? Come on. If the devil tells you that there should be shame in your life for your past that you're already forgiven of, that's a lie. That's something that is exalting itself against the knowledge of God. And so 1 John 1, 7 says, if we walk in the light, that means we choose to stay in a, a, an intimate, close-knit relationship with Jesus Christ where we are one. He says, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus that was shed upon the cross of Calvary, it, it washes away. It, so here's, what, here's my take on it. We have the ability to grab demons by their throat when they lie and force them into the light of God's word until they flee. Are you with me? See, I, I'm here to, we're here to punish hell. You, we're here to punish darkness. Are you with me? Not run from it. We're here to punish it. We're here to take cities back. We're here to take nations back for Jesus Christ. We're not here to allow the, the darkness to overwhelm and we move to another city where the church is better. We're here to actually march around our cities and take back what the enemy has taken from us because he has no authority. And the moment we recognize who we are and we recognize the authority that I talked about this afternoon, then we're set up in Jesus Christ to go back and take those areas back for Christ. And he, listen, he, and I talked about that this afternoon. He watches over his word. He can't wait for you and I to simply agree with his word so he can perform it. Isn't that crazy? I, I, I can't get, I never, my, my, one of my favorite verses is 2 Chronicles 16, 9. I hope I never get past it, right? I, I remember the moment I fell in love with God in that verse. It, it just blew my mind. He, he, the eyes of the Lord search to and fro on the earth, still searching He's still searching today. He hasn't quit searching. He's looking for what? He's looking for someone's heart who is all his. Why? Fully submitted, fully surrendered to him. He, the, you know what his promise is when he finds that heart? 
He will fully devote, he'll devote himself as unto royalty, come on, to prove how strong he is. This is the God that we serve. He's looking for someone like you, sis, that would say, I'm all in. I'm all in, no matter what. God, whatever you say, I agree with, and I want your reality to be my reality. I want to I want to join you in this journey of destroying darkness on the earth. And the moment he finds a heart like that, remember the remember what Isaiah said about the mind of Christ? He said that that Jesus' mind was fixed like flint. What does that mean? That's a, I mean, that's a mind that is it's set like in stone. I'm going to fulfill everything that my father asked me to fulfill. Every desire of the father will flow through me. That's who the father's looking for. That's what a surrendered, sub submitted vessel can actually do in the kingdom of God. That's who God's looking for. Who wants to be that person? Come on, think about that. See, I'm, I'm telling you this, brothers and sisters, if you would get a taste of this, you would never, listen, if you would get a taste of what it is to really collaborate with Holy Spirit and destroy the works of darkness and release life, you, you, would, you would say yuck on religion and you would never want anything to do with nominal religion anymore or nominal even Christianity. Are you with me? I mean, it would change everything because when you release life, you release life, creative power to create and cause and bring about what God has spoken into you and into this world. He's a mighty God. So let's, let's talk about this. The, uh, when I have a lot, of, a lot of people, like I said, that I minister to that are dealing with with the reality of living out of their senses rather than living by the Spirit. And, and Paul is telling us, he's admonishing us here, in, in a very, he, he warned us twice in a very strong way that if we live by our senses, we're not, number one, I don't, we're, we can't, we're, we're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Are you with me in that? Ah, but how many of us live by our senses? Think about it. I, I heard, uh, heard uh, it was Bill Johnson, I heard him say a couple years ago, he said this, you know, he said, we have this incredible uh, inheritance in the kingdom of God to get up in the mornings and, 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 and rather than get up in the mornings and test how our body feels and then declare how our day is going to be by the way we feel, we get up, we get, we have the, the ability in Christ to get up in the morning and say, huh, I'm a child of God. He loves me. He's with me. He's empowered me. His spirit is inside of me. I get to choose the way I feel today. Yeah. You, we get to, we get to choose the way we're going to be every single day. You, you recognize that, right? You check it out in your own life. When you get up in the morning, you feel doom and gloom, and you're just like dragging your way through the day, and we try to make coffee help, and we try to use this, and we try to use that. Listen, all we have to do is stop and surrender ourselves to Jesus and agree with what he says over us, and the moment that happens, everything in our perspective changes. And the moment your perspective changes, your environment changes. The moment your perspective changes is the moment your environment changes. Come on, you've, you've, you've dealt with it. Working with somebody that's just like, like hell to work with. Come on. Yeah. We've all worked with people like that. You know the devil sent them there on assignment to destroy your day, right? And, and, and if you're there downcast, and you're not, you're not in a kingdom perspective, kingdom mindset. You're not living in the throne room in intimacy with Christ. You get caught up in that garbage. And the first thing you want to do is lash back at that person and try to destroy them. That's the reality. Or allow them to destroy your day. That's just the reality. And yet you and I, as inheritors of the kingdom of God, have the, have the incredible right to come into any environment, no matter how hellish it is, to come into any environment and give that environment an immediate upgrade. We do. When you walk in the room, brothers and sisters, you walk in the room as an invitation. That's just the reality of the kingdom. So what do you walk in the room with? Think about that. What do you walk? What is the invitation that you're bringing into the room? Are you asking people to enjoy to invite you? Are you inviting people to to join you on your journey? Of, uh, or are you inviting people to join your journey of joy and love and peace? Come on, I want to talk about this weapon now. I think this weapon is so powerful. I love to watch it work. Look at verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Dan talked about love last night. So brilliant. Every time he preaches that message, it's, it's, it has to slay you. I mean, it does. Not in a bad way, but in a good way. It, it, Hebrews 4.12, is, it's, it's present. The word is active and living. It opens us up. It, we're measured all of a sudden. Come on. And where we're found wanting, Jesus says, I've got the cure for that. Right? What a, what a mighty God we serve. But, the, but the, the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. 
Against such things there is no law. The enemy's a legalist. Come on, he's a legalist. His, 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 his whole joy is to exploit our sinful activity. That's his whole joy. That's his desire, is to exploit our sinful activity. His desire is to actually create the environment that would invite us into a place of joining him in sin and then exploiting that sin that we've just committed. That's his function. That's his job. And so it regards to relationships at our, at our workplace, in our homes, wh wherever it is that we go, I think our greatest weapon against uh, the enemy and dismantling the enemy's schemes against us is love. I think it's love. I think when you and I choose to walk in what Dan preached about last night, it, it, is, it is a sword that slays and destroys. It's a bulldozer. It's a bulldog that destroys the enemy's efforts against you as a human being, as a child of God. Come on. I, just, I believe it with my whole heart. I see it all the time. I remember, uh, what, what time is it? We're doing good. I remember a few years ago at the local church where I was an associate pastor, and I kept getting wounded. I, I, was, I was awakened to the kingdom. I talked about that this afternoon. I was kind of like an anomaly for a while. I was using words like prophecy. We didn't use those in our home church. It was weird. It was scary. You know, all these weird things. And so they kind of looked at me like I was strange. And yet they recognized the presence of God was in my life. And they recognized there was good fruit being produced through my life as, I, as long as I would stay surrendered and allow his dreams and his, his ideas and his ambitions to flow through me, Right? And so I would meet with my pastors, my senior pastor and his wife, and we would meet and we would, we would uh, uh, have uh, counseling meetings, or not counseling meetings, we'd have sessions where we had planning meetings, where we'd plan the ministry that we were going to do for the next several months in the church. And it never failed. It never failed. When, when, whenever I'd come up at these, I would listen. I'm a listener. We're all supposed to be listeners. We talked about this afternoon. I'm a listener, and so I'd listen. On the way over to the meeting, I would listen to the Holy Spirit and find out what he wanted to do because I think when you and I gather, whether it's in board meetings, Sunday school rooms, or even here, we need the mind of God on what it is that we're doing. We don't need our own garbage. Are you with me? We need to hear what Jesus wants to do because if we hear what he wants to do, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, he'll release the power to make it happen. There's life in that. And so I'd, we'd go to these meetings, and, and, and we'd sit around the table, and I would share, and, and, and I would get attacked. I would get attacked by whatever. I'd just get attacked, and it, and it would wound me. And I would go home, and my wife knew. I mean, as soon as she saw me, she would recognize. She would say to me, oh, how'd it go? <laughs> and she'd be like, are you all right? And I was just downcast. I was crushed by what was being said back to me because, you know, I won't go into any of that. I was just being crushed by it. I was affected by it, and it shouldn't have affected me. And this was going on for a couple of years, and it was really causing issues. I was having a hard time loving the people that were wounding me. Come on. So it was breaking down the ability of God to work through me the way he wanted to work. And I remember one day, and it wasn't on God's end. It was totally on mine. The Holy Spirit said to me, Jay, how long are you going to allow yourself to be affected and wounded by what people say to you? And I was, I, I thought, well, I don't, I didn't know I had a choice. <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't. And, and, uh, and so I remember the Holy Spirit said, Jay, I want you to go to Proverbs uh, 4.23. And so I went there. Don't turn there. I went there. And, 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 and the Lord said, I want to teach you, Jay. I want to teach you what it looks like to guard your heart so that at any moment, at any instant, when I want to dream a dream and produce fruit through you, I can do it and there'll be nothing that will hinder my dreams from flowing through your life. And so I was like, I'm in on this, God. Teach me this. Well, obviously that caused that. I mean, there was, I had to die. <laughs> another death, another day. Come on. We got to die to live. Got to die to live. And it's a glorious death. Come on. Every, every, every time there's a resurrection, it's Jesus. It's not me. Hallelujah. I love that. And so I remember I read Proverbs 4, 23. It says, guard your heart for from it flow the issues of your life. And so I studied that, and the Lord let me know that I needed to study it deeper. And so I studied it deeper, and I got a word picture out of the original Hebrew language that really helped me to understand what God was trying to tell me. And here's what he said, and, and once again, I'm talking about love, I believe, is one of our greatest weapons to dismantle the schemes of the enemy in our life that keeps us from producing the fruit that Jesus wants to produce, right? And it's the fruit that he produces through us, it's the fruit of doing that brings glory to the Father and glory to the Son. And so he desires... It's it's not the fruit of being, as, as much, it, it, it's both in, in working together, the fruit of being, who he makes us, and then allowing his dreams to flow through us, that brings glory to him. Are you with me on that? A lot of us live in this fruit of, of being, right? Fruit of being. I am, we, we're, we're called to be love. We're called to be joy and peace, and this is who we're supposed to be in Christ Jesus. We should be able, as I said, walk in a room, and that should be evident, yeah. right? 
but then he's created us to be able to speak and move and touch and serve and bless. And it's when we begin to move and release that the glory uh, is received by the Father and the Son. And so I remember I studied that scripture, and, and here's, here's, what it, here's what it means. It's a word picture. The Father revealed to me that, that our heart is like a vineyard. And you guys, have, you guys have vineyards all through this area, right? You're familiar with vineyards. And so it's, it's like a vineyard. And, and, he, and he showed me in this word picture that, that this vineyard is, is ripe and ready in different seasons to release fruit that, or a harvest that brings him joy, Right? And so he showed me what that looks like. And then he showed me that when I come into an agreement with being wounded or offended, it's like allowing a thief to come into my vineyard at night and steal away some of the fruit that is designed to bring him joy. So let me give you a couple pictures of what it looks like that's practical so you can understand. I, my, I told you earlier, my practice ground was Walmart, growing up and learning how to follow the Spirit. And so I'd go to Walmart, and I remember I always tell the same story because it just makes sense. But I was on aisle 13 at Walmart, and I walked by this lady who was pushing a, 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 a grocery cart, and she was bent over. She had a cane. She looked like she was in pain. Um, it was really would, would have been dumb to ask her that because you could tell. She looked mean. She actually looked like she would hit you with the cane if you crossed her path the wrong way. And so, and so I was walking past her. I, I know what the Word says about praying for people for healing, but I was waiting for a movement of the Spirit to tell me what He wanted to do for her life. Are you with me? Right? Okay, and so I walked past her. The Holy Spirit said to me, Jay, I want to heal her. If you'll go back and pray for her right now, I will heal her. I had a decision to make. This, this is what it looks like for Jesus to pull down some of that fruit. Okay, now I want to produce fruit that's going to bring me glory. I had to come into an agreement with it. I walked back and I, and I asked her, I said, and it was stupid. She could have hit me. I said, ma'am, are you in pain? And she said, oh my goodness, I am. She told me the story. She was in an elevator accident. She'd fallen, I don't remember if it was 30 or 40. It was either 30 or 40 stories, 30 or 40 years ago, a long time ago. And I don't know how it, but when it, when it went down, it went down fast enough that it crushed her spine. And so her spine had to be reconditioned and made with metal and pins and whatever, rods. And, and so she was always bent over and it destroyed her ability to have a relationship with people. I mean, she, she was so, she was consumed by the pain that was in her life that she just didn't have time for anything. She couldn't see anything past that. And so I said, um, could I pray for you? And she goes, absolutely. That's fine. She goes, Christians pray for me all the time. And, and I wanted to tell her, yeah, but I bet not one that's just been told by the Holy Spirit that today's your day, baby. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I didn't say that. Um, so, so I said, well, can I touch your back? And I knelt down. She said, yes, I touched her back and I commanded pain to be gone. I got right back up and I said, what's happening? What's going on? And she says, the moment you touch my back, all the pain left, but she wasn't upright. She was still bent over. She still had her cane. And so I said, the God that I serve does things in a complete fashion. I knew it, you know, it was like cheating. I had it in my back pocket. He already said he was going to heal her. So I knew there was more. So I said, can I pray again? I got down. I prayed again. Um, I stood back up by the time I stood by on my feet, which was quick. She was putting the cane in the grocery cart. She was standing upright. She had a smile on her face. And I didn't, I didn't stand and celebrate with her. I just let her go on about her business, right? And I, but I did stand on the other side of the aisle, and I just watched. And I noticed she went and talked to every person that was around her. She was filled with life. I mean, she, now she, she was asking people for help with this. She was asking for this. And it was just incredible to see what Jesus had done, okay? I wish every story was like that, but it's not. So let me tell you another story. On, I think it was aisle five. I think I was on aisle five in, in Walmart. <laughs> it, was, it was one side is bread and the other side is freeze, frozen like pizzas and stuff. Anyway, um, and so I was there and I, was, I had been wounded by in one of these meetings. And so I was, I was walking down the aisle and the Lord told me another one of these times where he wanted to pull down and, and produce fruit. And he told me what he wanted to do to a person. It was a lady in a yellow dress. And I remember I looked over her and I was listening to Holy Spirit and I was so consumed with the pain that was in my heart because of the offense that was in my heart. I made a decision to not join him in that journey and not go pray for that lady. And she didn't get healed that day. And you know what the Lord told me about that? He said that when you and I allow offense, when you and I allow our hearts to be offended, it's, it's, it's the offense is actually an attack from the enemy and it's strategic, not just against you guys. You got to get this, not just against me. It's against the love of God that's already within our hearts to keep us from being able to join the father in his dreams and desires and ambitions for being released on the earth. Are you with me? 
It's, it is like allowing the enemy come into your camp and steal away fruit that brings him joy. And I remember just a few years ago, or actually it was just a year and a half ago on this team, because now I'm really, I'm concerned about that. I don't want anything to get in the way of that. I don't want any offense. I want to walk in love. And he said, if we walk in love, that there's no law, we, we're not bound by any law. Come on. If we walk in love, who fulfills the law? And the enemy can't attack that. He hates that. So we got to quit. One more quick story. Our, our, our kids, most of them were lost last year when we came here. We've been back in the, in the ministry and back serving Jesus and in the kingdom for six years. But our kids, our five kids, uh, didn't come back with us when we came. They actually started to reject us. Uh, we, we were able to lead one of our daughters to the Lord, uh, and, and, and she's kind of been in and out, and she's doing better now, and we're thankful for that, praying, praying for the other ones. But our oldest daughter... Um, has, has just been a solid no. So, we, you know, we don't preach to our kids. We've used this weapon against them. They didn't even know it. It's not even fair. Ah, we've used this weapon against the enemy working in their life to keep them from coming to Jesus. We've used this weapon. And so we've just honored our kids and we have loved them. We've served them. We care for them. We could care less about, we just want them to know Jesus and they're going to know him through us. Are you with me? And so we watched as our oldest daughter and her husband these last, it's been these last six years. And it's six years. That takes, it's a little while. It takes patience, but that's part of love. So if we're in love, we have everything we need to hold out. Come on. I mean, this is incredible what love does. And so we were just holding out for our, our kids. And I think it was like three weeks ago, four weeks ago, something like that. The Holy Spirit told Judy, Judy, when you guys get back off your team retreat, we were in Jackson, uh, whole Wyoming for a retreat. When you get back off your retreat, I want you to go talk to your daughter, Heather. When you go talk to her, she will repent and she'll give her heart to me, right? We never did preach. We didn't send the verses. We, never, we just loved her. And we watched as love slowly dismantled the works of the devil in her life. And we went back and Judy, she, she went over and she talked to her and our daughter, Heather. She wept for two hours, repented. She wanted Jesus. And she, I mean, it's been a, an incredible transformation in her life uh, in, with that encounter with Jesus. And I have no doubt it was love that dismantled the works of the darkness, without a doubt. I guarantee you, brothers and sisters, if you allow this love to take root in your life, this love will win every job site. This love will win every city. This love will live, it'll win every family. How do you know? Because he said in 1 Corinthians 13, love never fails, right? It doesn't fail. So let me pray with you. I got to quit. Father, I've been having a blast. I'm so thankful for the way you allow us to come together as your kids and hear truth. Father, I thank you that you've shown us, God, you, 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 you broke open the word last night with such, such beauty, with such delight over us. You, you shared truth last night that has the ability to transform the world. <laughs> Come on. Your love never fails. Every circumstance, every situation, love always wins. Always, every single time. Father, I thank you for showing us today again that love is a weapon against the schemes of darkness that come against us. And if we will surrender and submit always to love, because God, as Dan said, we can't do this. This is not something we can do. This has nothing to do with performance. It has everything to do with full surrender, complete surrender, and complete dependence upon you who is love, Jesus, your love. So Lord, again today, another practical way to allow love to have its way in our life so that demonic schemes are destroyed and so that your dreams and your ambitions and your hopes, Papa, can be seen and experienced on the earth. And so, Father, I just thank you for what you're releasing in this place right now. God, I thank you for releasing practical ways to join you and allowing you to live your life through us. It's not about us, it's about you. And if we'll let you have your way, you will have those around us. Hallelujah, you will. I know you will. I have no doubt. And we're not in a hurry. We're not in a hurry. Jesus, we're not in a hurry. We're going to work patience. We're just going to allow your love to have its way. We're not going to say, how much longer before the kids come back? How much longer before my husband comes to Jesus? How much longer before my wife? We're not going to say, we're not going to ask those questions. We're going to join you in, in Lord, just smothering <laughs> smothering, covering, baptizing, drenching those people around us in your love. And then watch the, the enemy flee because he has to. He has no choice. Love always wins. Thank you, Jesus, for this time. In your name I pray. Amen. I love you guys. Bless you. Take a break and then we'll, we'll start back.